Liz and the Bluebird is my favorite piece of media in existence. If Zaria wasn't here, it would probably be my favorite singular thing in existence. Every moment of its soundscape is the most captivating an ear has ever taken in. I hang on every line of dialogue with the most tense grip my very soul can muster. This movie is beauty incarnate. Before proceeding any further, I want to note that Eleven Arts provided me a screener of this film in order to review it, and also sponsored a tweet of mine promoting their theatrical run of it. I hope that my track record, both of bold positive statements towards the HBK Euphonium franchise, and of less effusively praising videos on other films I've been sponsored to promote, assures you that this arrangement with Eleven Arts has injected no hyperbole into this video. I first watched Liz back at its Anime Expo screening, and have since made a habit of saying, so I think Liz might be the best anime ever. Upon getting to re-experience it, I can't come to any contrary conclusion. This is simultaneously the most tightly, precisely crafted anime in existence, and the loosest, the most spontaneous and free. This is a movie where the specific tempo of a character's footsteps has direct, unpretentious meaning, and yet also one where part of the soundtrack was composed by tossing paint across blank sheet music. And yeah, I'm a sucker for this avant-garde art housey stuff. As I've said, Angel's Egg got me into anime. But in Liz, each of these decisions has such ingenious intentionality behind them. The technique used to animate the birds, of painting half of it and then folding the paper over, is a direct reflection of the relationship between its two leads that the film centers, how they're so close but can't quite match up and connect. The entire thing feels wispy, immaterial, and fleeting, an atmosphere Yamada intentionally enveloped the film in through decisions like the extremely thin line work of the characters. In short, it is a captivating contradiction, chaos being utilized by the team behind it to create order. And what you're left with, what results from all these disparate creative decisions and techniques, is, as I said at the start, simply the most everything moment-to-moment -moment experience out there. It's the most enchanting, most affecting, most of literally every positive adjective, and probably most of some negative adjectives that it somehow twists around into making positive in this context. It's that kind of movie. I have never cared about a single footstep as much as I did when watching Liz, and I cared about every footstep in the film that much. I've never cared about a single word, a single note, a single shot, a single frame as much as I did when watching Liz. I'll restrain myself here because if I let myself talk about more moments from its runtime, I'd end up reciting the whole film to you. So the one specific scene I'm going to talk about is the opening one. I think that a linchpin to that experience I just described is how thoroughly you get brought into the world of Liz. A big part of how it can have that effect on you is how incredibly tangible the entirety of that world feels. In an extended, wordless sequence, Nozomi and Mizore walk through the school up into the practice room together, and every brush of a hand against a wall, every jangle of a key, every creaky hinge is given focus. The filmmaking privileges these sensory moments above all else, cutting to a shot of whatever is making that sound when it happens, all while a song plays underneath it that is in part constructed out of sounds, collected by the composer Kensuke Ushio as he walked around the school that serves as the model for Kitaoji and played with the building, teasing all sorts of expressions out of the walls and windows of the place. After that introduction, you exist in this space, just as much as any of the characters, and you're prepared for everything that is to come. Yes, Liz and the Bluebird certainly had a lot of advantages going for it when it came to being my favorite anime. There's my aforementioned affinity for Art House, my deep pre-existing investment in Hibike Euphonium as a franchise, and the fact that pretty orchestral swells usually get me a bit emotional even on their own. However, this is a movie that can be seen and appreciated without the context of the rest of the series. That highlights some of the best that anime has to offer in terms of animation, musical composition, creativity, and so many other areas. I think that if you love anime, you're extremely likely to really appreciate this film, because for me personally, this film is the manifestation of why I am so absurdly in love with the medium that I'd end up where I am today. Needless to say, if you can make it to a showing of Listen the Bluebird, I give my highest recommendation that you go do so. Beyond everything else, it's the type of film that will be greatly elevated by being experienced on the big screen with the big sound. 
Also, in addition to watching the movie, make sure you go watch Under the Scopes and Subtitled Animes videos about it too. They are fantastic, and I even make a cameo in that second one. UFOTube represent. Getting to be a part of the marketing for Mary and the Witch's Flower was already surreal enough when that happened. To get to work with Liz too? I sort of feel like my life is complete already after that. Nonetheless, we soldier on, however. I've still got that Wandering Sun video to edit after all, and who knows how long that'll take me. An enormous thank you to those who have allowed me to reach this point. Psyker, Mathwiz97, Jonathan Conley, Tyler Monk, Tincho37, Lord Liquid Bacon III, Elaine Altfelt, David McCown, Smokeweed Sephiroth420, JMAM4747, Chase Sutter, Dove, Lucas Holcomb, Randall Hudson, and everyone else supporting me on Patreon already.